My dad left me a strange box of envelopes before he passed. It changed my life. Death is always a surprise. No one expects it. Not even terminal patients think they're going to die in a day or two. In a week, maybe. It was no different with my father. In fact, his death was even more unexpected. He was gone at age 27. The same age that claimed the lives of several famous musicians. He was young. Way too young. Cancer doesn't choose its victims. He was gone when I was young, and I learned what a funeral was because of him. I was eight and a half, old enough to miss him for a lifetime. My mother picked me up at school and we went to the hospital. The doctor told the news with all the sensitivity that doctors lose over the years. My mother cried. She did have a tiny bit of hope. As I said before, everyone does. I felt the blow. What does it mean? Wasn't it just a regular disease, the kind of disease doctors heal with a shot? I hated you, Dad. I felt betrayed. I screamed with anger in the hospital, until I realized my father was not around to ground me. I cried. With a shoebox under her arm, a nurse came by to comfort me. The box was full of sealed envelopes, with sentences where the address should be. I couldn't understand exactly what was going on. The nurse then handed me a letter. The only letter that was out of the box. Your dad asked me to give you this letter. He spent the whole week writing these, and he wants you to read it. Be strong. The nurse said, holding me. The envelope read when I'm gone. I opened it. Son, if you're reading this, I'm dead. I'm sorry. I knew I was going to die. I didn't want to tell you what was going to happen. I didn't want to see you crying. Well, it looks like I've made it. I think that a man who's about to die has the right to act a little bit selfish. Well, as you can see, I still have a lot to teach you. After all, you don't know crap about anything. So I wrote these letters for you. You must not open them before the right moment, okay? This is our deal. I love you. Take care of your mom. You're the man of the house now. Love, Dad. D.S. I didn't write letters to your mom. She's got my car. He made me stop crying with his bad handwriting. Printing was not easy back then. His ugly writing, which I barely understood, made me feel calm. It made me smile. That's how my father did things. Like the joke before the grounding. That box became the most important thing in the world for me. I told my mother not to open it. Those letters were mine and no one else could read them. I knew all the life moments written on the envelopes by heart. But it took a while for these moments to happen. And I forgot about it. Seven years later, after we moved to a new place, I had no idea where I put the box. I couldn't remember it. And when we don't remember something, we usually don't care about it. If something goes lost in your memory, it doesn't mean you lost it. It simply doesn't exist anymore. It's like change in the pockets of your trousers. And so it happened. My teenage years and my mother's new boyfriend triggered what my father had anticipated a long time before. My mother had several boyfriends, and I always understood it. She never married again. I don't know why, but I like to believe that my father has been the love of her life. This boyfriend, however, was worthless. I thought she was humiliating herself by dating him. He had no respect for her. She deserved something a lot better than a guy she met at a bar. I still remember the slap she gave me after I pronounced the word bar. I'll admit that I deserved it. I learned that over the years. At the time, when my skin was still burning from the slap, I remembered the box and the letters. I remembered a specific letter, which read when you have the worst fight ever with your mom. I ransacked my bedroom looking for it, which earned me another slap in the face. I found the box inside a suitcase lying on top of the wardrobe. The limbo. I looked through the letters and realized that I had forgotten to open when you have your first kiss. I hated myself for doing that, and I decided that would be the next letter I'd open. When you lose your virginity came right next in the pack, a letter I was hoping to open really soon. Eventually I found what I was looking for. Now apologize to her. I don't know why you're fighting and I don't know who's right. But I know your mother. So a humble apology is the best way to get over this. I'm talking about a down-on-your-knees apology. She's your mother, kid. She loves you more than anything in this world. Do you know that she went through natural birth because someone told her that it would be the best for you? Have you ever seen a woman giving birth? Do you need a bigger proof of love than that? Apologize. She'll forgive you. Love, Dad. My father was not a great writer, he was just a bank clerk. But his words had a great impact on me. They were words that carried more wisdom than all of my 15 years of age at the time. I rushed to my mother's room and opened the door. I was crying when she turned her head to look me in the eyes. She was also crying. I don't remember what she yelled at me. Probably something like, what do you want? What I do remember is that I walked towards her holding the letter my father wrote. I held her in my arms, while my hands crumpled the old paper. She hugged me, and we both stood in silence. My father's letter made her laugh a few minutes later. 
We made peace and talked a little about it. She told me about some of his most eccentric habits, such as eating salami with strawberries. Somehow, I felt he was sitting right next to us. Me, my mother and a piece of my father, a piece he left for us, on a piece of paper. It felt good. It didn't take long before I read when you lose your virginity. Congratulations, son. Don't worry, it gets better with time. It always sucks the first time. Mine happened with an ugly woman, who was also a street worker. My biggest fear is that you'd ask your mother what virginity is after reading what's on the letter. Or even worse, reading what I just wrote without knowing what wanking off is, you know what it is, right? But that's none of my business. Love, Dad. My father followed me through my entire life. He was with me, even though he was not near me. His words did what no one else could. They gave me strength to overcome countless challenging moments in my life. He would always find a way to put a smile on my face when things looked grim, or clear my mind during those angry moments. When you get married made me feel very emotional. But not so much as when you become a father. Now you'll understand what real love is, son. You'll realize how much you love her, but real love is something you'll feel for this little thing over there. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. I'm just a corpse, I'm not a fortune teller. Have fun. It's a great thing. Time is gonna fly now, so make sure you'll be around. Never miss a moment, they never come back. Change diapers, bathe the baby, be a role model to this child. I think you have what it takes to be an amazing father, just like me. The most painful letter I read in my entire life was also the shortest letter my father wrote. While he wrote those four words, I believe he suffered just as much as I did living through that moment. It took a while, but eventually I had to open when your mother is gone. She is mine now. A joke. A sad clown hiding his sadness with a smile on his makeup. It was the only letter that didn't make me smile, but I could see the reason. I always kept the deal I had made with my father. I never read letters before their time. With the exception of when you realize you're gay. Since I never thought I'd have to open this one, I decided to read it. It was one of the funniest letters, by the way. What can I say? I'm glad I'm dead. Now, all joking aside, being half dead made me realize that we care too much about things that don't matter much. Do you think that changes anything, son? Don't be silly. Be happy. I would always wait for the next moment, the next letter. The next lesson my father would teach me. It's amazing what a 27-year-old man can teach to an 85-year-old senior like me. Now that I am lying on a hospital bed, with tubes in my nose and my throat, thanks to this damn cancer, I run my fingers on the faded paper of the only letter I didn't open. The sentence when your time comes is barely visible on the envelope. I don't want to open it. I'm scared. I don't want to believe that my time is near. It's a matter of hope, you know? No one believes they're gonna die. I take a deep breath, opening the envelope. Hello, son. I hope you're an old man now. You know, this letter was the easiest to write, and the first I wrote. It was the letter that set me free from the pain of losing you. I think your mind becomes clearer when you're this close to the end. It's easier to talk about it. In my last days here I thought about the life I had. I had a brief life, but a very happy one. I was your father and the husband of your mother. What else could I ask for? It gave me peace of mind. Now you do the same. My advice for you, you don't have to be afraid. P.S. I miss you.